I didn't think the car interests were going to take three parts. I thought it was only going to take two. But, no, need the third one, so here we go. <laughs> Roof are one of the most well-known tuners of Porsche around. Always on hand to squeeze out a little extra performance from the excellent platforms Porsche supply. This CTR3 is the next generation of the CTR lineup, following the original CTR and CTR2. Normally, Roof just focus on the internal components. Original CTR, which is the world famous Yellow Bird, was based on the 930 generation 911, while the CTR2 used the 993's platform. But the CTR3 has had extensive work done for its 997 foundation. With Roof independently doing work do all the work in-house, unlike previous CTRs, the engine is mounted midship, with the 6-speed transmission taking its place in the back. Thanks to Roof's famous engine tuning, plus the addition of two turbochargers, the 3.8-litre intercooled V6 shoves out 690 brake horsepower. The result? 236 miles an hour and 0-60 in 3.2 seconds. Watch out for this thing on the straights, it won't be in sight for long. That's a thing with roofs, they sort of take Porsches and absolutely mutate them to levels they have no right to be. And to think, all of this was a result of one Volkswagen. A Beetle. That's a Volkswagen Beetle. Or at least... What little remains of it? RUF, CTR, free club sport. And here we have an even more mental variant. The top model combines decades of experience and state-of-the-art technology of timeless design. As a logical consequence of the ongoing development, RUF offers a vehicle that inspires with its extraordinary driving dynamics and technology, the flat. Wide front of the independent design with the characteristic front fenders make an impressive appearance for the viewer from the outside. Thanks to the special design of the fenders and the extremely low A-pillar in the conjunction with the low seating position, the driver at the CTR has a view of the road that is reminiscent of earlier sports prototypes. Along with carbon fibre body construction, the addition of a rear wing engine turning to 777 brake horsepower and keeping with its 236 mile per hour capability, the other tuners will struggle to keep their machinery ahead of this behemoth. Source https double dot dash dash www.ruf dash automobile dot de dash en dash model el dash ruf dash ctr dash free dash free club spot dash. Okay, Matt Rose. <laughs> well, you did leave a link, so I had to read it. <laughs> the series is the FIA Speed World Challenge, a World Endurance Championship, and it differs from the GT class whereby the car can run any engine they choose, regardless of displacement size. In order to stick it to rivals Ferrari in the series, Shelby decided to go big or go home with its engine for their new car, the Cobra. As luck would have it, Partners Ford has set aside a few uh, gigantic 7 litre 427 side oiler engines designed for stock cars. It was settled. The Cobra would run these engines, and development began in late 1964, with the prototype completed in the spring of 1965. However, a problem immediately reared its ugly head. Compared to the 345 brake horsepower produced by the previous 289 unit, the 427 side oiler was producing 493 brake horsepower. Which, true, doesn't sound like an issue, but when you consider that Shelby designer Phil Remington stated that the suspension wouldn't be able to handle this monstrous power, it quickly threatened the whole project. The characteristic side mounted leaf suspension was abandoned and replaced with more conventional dual double wishbone and core dampers. The suspension crisis averted, the Cobra cleared its 100 unit production minimum and acquired the FIA homologation certificate. It entered the Sports Car Club of America A production class from the opening of the 1966 season. In the end, 348 Cobra 427s were built, with 88 being set aside for competition specs or test cars. Just as a side note as well, they also produce a supercharged road model with competition spec equipment. They only made 31 of these. So they got given an engine that was 
far too powerful for the suspension to handle and nearly derailed the whole project. If that isn't American, I don't know what is. Skoda VGT. Created exclusively for Gran Turismo, this all-electric single-seat concept race car is Skoda's first introduction into the series. Inspired by the 1957 1100 OHC Spider race car, a car developed to be raced at the 24 hours of Le Mans, this VGT is a modern-day tribute to the car that ultimately never truly got the spotlight it deserved. Despite racing from 1960 to 1962, Skoda's VGT project began five years ago in 2019. When a design team revisited the 1100, they were torn whether to restore the original car or to conceptualize a futurist illustration for the digital age. After a consultation to the chief designer Oliver Stefani, they opted for the latter, creating a fusion of past and future design languages. This racing concept boasts a sleek interior, crisp, clear line and edges mirroring the fact of the current day Formula E cars. Two air brakes to assist in cornering and braking independent wishbone, pushrod suspension, carbon mo uh, monocoque chassis. Basically, it's got a lot of gubbins in it. That means it's fast, obviously. <laughs> Turns well and won't free, uh, fall apart in a breeze. Most importantly, though, it features 200 kilowatts equivalent to 268 2.2 brake horsepower, electric twin motors with one on each axle, delivering a total output of 1,071 brake horsepower. With a total of weight of 1.3 tons and ants weight for an electric car, this car is faster around corners than it any, has any right to be. And unlike any other electric cars, it actually makes a sound. Yes, electric cars making a sound that bloody last. It only took to the end of this year. The Spoon NSXR. Released alongside the, the Fork NSXR and the Knife NSXR, I presume. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. In the 30 years of existing, Spoon has achieved a lot of things. In 1990, the legendary NSX got released and Spoon raced with an NSX in the Macau GP and achieved the third place in class and in 1992 they built a Civic EF9 and participated in the domestic touring car endurance race. In 2008-2009 Spoon wanted to race again in the Macau GP so they built two cars one turbo NSX and this 2002 naturally aspirated NSX. All the sound deadening and unnecessary weight was removed and a multi-point roll cage was installed. The engine configuration is a brand new blue printed and balanced 3.2 litre NSXR engine mounted to a blue printed 6 speed NSXR gearbox with spoon, limited slip diff and final drive. Hey Ben, do you think this is an NSX? I think it's an NSX. Yeah, I think it's an, I think it's an NSX. Anyway, as the car had been built with endurance and racing in mind, the brakes are motorsport Brembo calipers on the front and rear with two-piece floating rotors. Surrounding the brakes are Forge ProDrive GC tens, GCO tens, excuse me, super light and strong wheels with Bridgestone tires. The exterior is finished in the familiar spoon livery covering the full NSXR GT Aero, including the front and rear bumpers, bonnet, spoiler, and finished off with spoon Aero mirrors. The interior of the car is simplistic, only a few buttons and a clean display which contains all the info one could need. Also, did I mention the full carbon dashboard? Honda Fest in 2018 in Meppen, Germany was the first event the NSX was shown at during the Europe tour. Race Park Meppen was built next to a big cooling tower and the NSX did some demo laps on this twi twisty 2.1km track and it sounded absolutely insane according to onlookers. Due to how loud the car was though, it was only allowed to do a few laps. So it was so loud that they had to stop doing it or else otherwise I'm guessing the whole cooling tower would fall apart. Also in 
Also, how many times do you think I said NSX during that? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. I think this is an, it's an, it's an NSX. Yeah, only slightly. Yeah. Spoon Sports! Indeed! This uh, uh, info, by the way, came from uh, the Wang and Warriors website. What? Pardon me? <laughs> this information came from www.wanganwarriors. Did you think I said something oh, else, you naughty boy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this information came from the Wang. Steelo Engineering Red Devil. This 69 Camaro is a pro touring style custom car that was built by General Motors engineer Mark Steelo in his own garage. Pro touring style cars are based on muscle cars of the 60s and 70s, and while they maintain a, the, uh, the original exterior, their mechanical aspects are updated to the latest technology. A great amount of machinery driving Mark 69 Camaro has been replaced with today's cutting edge, achieving performance levels equal or to surpass in the Corvette ZR1. The name Red Devil comes from the development of the codename for the Corvette ZR1, the Blue Devil. The engine powering the car now is based on the 7-litre LS7 from a Corvette Z06. And using cylinder heads from the LS9ZR1 engine together with a supercharger, it has been tuned to the maximum output of 745 brake horsepower. The transmission is a Tremec 6 speed, and the suspension has been replaced with Detroit speed Collierverse. Brem Brembo brakes are installed for stopping power. And it is even equipped with an ABS system. The Red Devil marked 3.4 seconds in the 0-60 acceleration test of Tar and Driver, Car and Driver magazine. And its quarter mile time is 11.5 seconds, outdoing the Corvette ZR1 in both tests. Highly regarded for pouring today's technology into historically significant muscle cars to make it ready to even take on the Nürburgring. The Red Devil was selected for the best in show of the Grand Turismo Awards at the 2010 SEMA show. The Subaru WRX, an all-wheel drive sports saloon manufactured by Subaru. Duh. The Subaru RX was originally a version of the Subaru Impreza. However, the WRX was separated from the Impreza in 2014. WRX stands for World Rally Experimental. STI, Subaru Technica International variants, were also brought all over from the Impreza line. The STI S207 was released in 2015, limited to 400 units. This version of the STI S207, known as the NBR, Nürburgring Challenge Package, was also released to celebrate Subaru's class victory at the 2015 Nürburgring 24 Hours, and is limited to 200 units. Run by a 2.0-litre EJ20 engine that produces 323 brake horsepower, the NBR uh, challenge package also comes with a six-pot Brembo brake at the front and four pots at the rear. A front splitter, rear spoiler, and a hard-to-miss sunrise yellow paint finish as well. Unfortunately, they were only sold in Japan. The lucky bastards. Zubaru BRZ GT300. Zubaru had already begun competing in the GT300 class of the Super GT series of the BRZ. However, that was with the first generation from 2012 to 2016. With the second generation model debuting in North America in autumn 2020, Zubaru immediately set to work to get the new car ready for the 2021 season. Just like with the first model, the new car had its engine developed by STI and bodywork by RNS Sports. With improved aerodynamics and shifting of the weight distribution, the car's cornering characteristics had seen a further improvement with, from its predecessor. In the hands of drivers Ta Takuto Igushi and Hideki Yamaguchi, the potential of the new BRZ was immediately on display. And in the 2021 season, they were blinding, taking pole in four of the eight races and winning the championship. <laughs> Since competing in domestic GT racing in 1997, this was their first championship win in their history. The fourth generation of Suzuki Swift came in 2016, with the Sport model appearing a year later. 
The body has been redesigned for better aerodynamic performance, made noticeable by the lowering of the nose compared to the standard variant. The engine has also been downsized by 0.2 litres, but the little 1.4 litre petrol engine has a helping hand from a turbocharger, and with the use of high octane petrol, this Swift has the access to a possible output of 138 brake horsepower. The suspension has also had a once over, exclusively tuned for this model. The track has been widened front and rear by 30mm for a more stable cornering. The body is lighter and stiffer than the base model and with 70kg shaved off, the car now is less than a tonne. Could cause a few upsets and surprises this one. Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak Pikes Peak, the largest hill climb race in the world. Every summer manufacturers and indie competitors take to this hill near Coralado Springs, USA. 12.4 miles in length, 1,439 meters in an elevation difference and 156 turns, 37 miles per hour hairpins and 124 mile per hour high speed curves and possible temperature difference of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This is an extremely demanding race, but Suzuki had made a monster to tame it. The V6 Escudo Pikes Peak, specifically built for this new event alone, the frame was an all new aluminum space frame, shifting the engine to a midship for better weight distribution, a 2.5 litre V16 with two turbochargers producing 981 brake horsepower, 800 kilograms total weight and gigantic front and rear spoilers optimising wind tunnels. Yeah, virtually this thing was inevitable, especially in the hands of seven time all Japan dirt trial champion Noburu Monster Tejima. If I butchered your name I'm really sorry. He began competing here in 1988 and in 1995 he took his disc alive to its maiden win and was the first overall win for a Japanese driver. Let's face it, it'd be a bit of a daft if the driver of his caliber lost with a machine like this. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Seven time winner and a machine of this caliber. Yeah, the winners practically gave given to him, even on an event such as difficult mm. as Spike's Peak. Debuting in 2016, the Tesla Model 3 is one of the more compact Tesla models, with dimensions of 4,695mm long, 1,855mm wide, and 1,445mm tall. It was apparently designed with Japanese mechanical parking garages in mind. Within the sporty 5 door package is the simplest layout a car can possibly get. No switches on the dashboard, no instruments display, nothing. Everything is done on a tablet to the side of the steering wheel, and with everything from climate control to Tesla's famous autopilot being on this 15 inch screen, are also available on a smartphone app. There are many different layouts for the Model 3s you can opt for, just like with the other Tesla models, but this performance dual motor all wheel drive is the most powerful and best performing Model 3 to date. Placing an electric motor at each axle, the total power output is not officially public information as of yet. But with a 0 60 time of 3.3 seconds and a top end of 162 miles an hour, the unmatched cost to performance ratio should speak for itself. That's the thing with Teslas. I like them, but I don't. Mm. What do you think, Ben? What are your thoughts on Teslas? I mean, they're alright. They're okay. I do like the technology inside of them, but mm. personally, not my go to. Are in the water. They're expensive for what they are, and you know, I get there's a lot of decent technology, but uh, I kind of wish it was from another corporation sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mr. Musk. Anyway, moving on. Tesla Model 3 N24 e race car. Now. What if Tesla hosted their own racing series like Porsche, Ferrari and Lamborghini do? Well, this is kind of what their cars could possibly look like. This is a completely fictional race car that looks too tempting to leave out of the tournament. So how well will this electric racer do against more established competitors? Instant acceleration provided by the motors and aero could make this car one to watch out for on a technical circuit, even despite the weight. Seriously, when you think about it, Tesla's, you know, with their instant acceleration that the electric motors provides i mean out the turns and through the turns with the, the right aero honestly they could be pretty scary they could be you know top contenders on technical circuits even as you said despite the weight 
Throughout production of the R33 Skyline, Tuning House Tommy Kyra produced 400 versions of the Tommy Kyra R on the BCN R33, or just R33 generation, Skyline GTR platform. These were significantly upgraded, including signature pieces both in and out of the car. Chief among the main upgrades included a turbocharger which could raise power from 330 to 425 brake horsepower. These were all signed and numbered, and Tommy Kyra offered a six-piece body kit specifically for the R33 Skyline GTR. It usually came with 18-inch three-piece split rims and an upgraded coilover suspension. Inside, Tommy Kyra fitted Vicario seats with Tommy Kyra embroidered backs. New front gauge fascias, fascias, I can't stop, I don't know how you sell that word, <laughs> and a special steering wheel. I buggered that one up at the end, but that's going in. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, my favourite car in all of motorsports. Or at least the road game version. <clears throat> Toyota GT1 road car. This TSO20 is the machine that Toyota prepared for victory when declaring Toyota's participation in the 1998 Le Mans 24 hour race. This machine was produced by the TTE, Toyota Team Europe, led by Ove Anderson and is loaded with a power unit based on the V8 twin turbo engine used in previous Group C races. This was combined with what could be called the ultimate GT machine body. And at the 1998 Le Mans, it achieved the miraculous by nearly succeeding in a debut win. A year later, in 1999, the TSO further evolved for its second attempt at Le Mans. The body created from a carbon fiber composite with dimensions of 4,840mm length, 2 meters width and 1,125 millimeters height and a wheelbase of 2.8 meters. Had a larger cutout in the front fender and eliminated the rear fender louvers and regulation changes decreased the tires from 19 to 18 inches. The anti-lock braking system has also been removed so the driver can't be too hard on the brakes otherwise they'll just lock up the wheels. The aforementioned V8 is a 3.6 litre twin turbo modified for the 1998 R36V model. The maximum output exceeds 600 brake horsepower and it weighs only 900 kilograms. The transmission is a 6 speed sequential semi automatic like in F1 cars, but if you can see inside the cockpit, right there, see that little lever there? It uses a mechanical shift lever due to the regulations at the time. At the 1999 Le Mans Championships, two out of three vehicles retired, but vehicle number three, handled by Ukio Katayama, Keichi Tsuchiya, and Toshio Suzuki, stab me if I pronounce those wrong, three Japanese drivers scored a magnificent second place, all very impressive, but this is the road-going variant of that legendary car. If Toyota wanted to enter the GT1 into Le Mans in 1998, they were required to build, by GT1 regulations, a handful of road legal models. And just how many was a handful? Two. Two GT1 road cars were all that TTE had to make in order to enter the most prestigious enduring racing event in 1998. Just as an aside as well, Nissan were tasked with doing the same thing for their R390. They only had to make one road going car. A single one. Developed to compete in the LMP1 class of the World Endurance Championship 2016 season, the TSO 50 had a lot of expectations to live up to, as its predecessor, the TSO 40, became series champion in 2014. And despite a respectable third place finish in the 2015 season, Toyota completely redesigned the TSO 50 from scratch, determined to take the car to victory. Just like its older brother, the TSO 50 remained four-wheel drive and kept its hybrid system. But they swapped out the naturally aspirated 3.7 litre V8 to a 2.4 litre V6, downsizing the engine but slapping on two turbochargers for a bit of extra wallop. The power also was seen to buy some batteries, but the batteries themselves were changed. 
changing from super capacitors with fast charge and discharge characteristics to more powerful and high capacity lithium ion batteries designed purely for racing. The twin turbo V6 alone produces 493 brake horsepower, but when the batteries kick in, a total output of 986 brake horsepower is at a driver's disposal. When they entered the season with two TSO50s under the Toyota Gazoo racing team, one car was driven by Kazuki Nakajima, Sebastian Buemi and Anthony Davidson, while the other was piloted by Kamui Kobayashi. Remember him, Ben? F1? Kamui Kobayashi? Mm. <laughs> Stefan Serizin and Mike Conway. Just, Mike Conway. Oh, yes, go on. Just... Just... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to be said. I think that's all my emotion into one. Just mm. <laughs> the Kirby Ashi Saras in a Glomway car was the car to watch and pose as a possible contender for the Jarvis Championship. But in the end, they placed third in the season rankings and third in the manufacturer's rankings, just the same as last year. So, all that work into the lithium ion batteries, engine swapping, and kobayashi ing <laughs> and they resulted with no different of a position than last year. Oh, look at that! There's a um, just noticed in the interior. There's a map of SARS on by the net driver on the left side. Look, left side. <laughs> That's cool. That's neat. Lovely. All right, next. TVR Tuscan Speed 6 TVR had been in business since 1958 with the debut of its Grand Touria before some Russian kid got hold of his hands on the brand in 2004 and Kirin nearly half a decade of work to near its destruction. Before all that though, TVR had developed the Tuscan in 2000, hoping to revive the sports car Bloodline, which shared the same name and laid to waste on everything on the tracks in the 60s. A very unique styling bears little resemblance to the Tuscan of old. But it remains one of the most aggressive looking cars to this day. The engine is a 4 litre DOHC 6 cylinder and was developed completely in house. The engine gives the car its second name, the Speed 6, boasting a dry lumps, uh, dry, uh, a dry sump lubrication system with an oil coiler and an inline 6 throttle body to control air intake. Built on the level of high tier racing machinery of the time, with an output of just 359 brake horsepower and a total weight of just 1.1 tons, this car is a menace. And while it's not a modern car by any means, it is a machine that a driver can drive to enjoy the basic fundamentals of driving a car with no driver aids and raw experience of being one with the car. That is, of course, if driver is said talented enough to extract the best performance out of the car without wrapping himself around a tree. Yeah, TVRs are very difficult to control, even as late ones as this one. And this is a Gran Turismo original tuned model for the racetrack. Yep, that's it. Nothing more. Just a tuned variant by Gran Turismo for the racetrack. Next! Volkswagen Scirocco R. The Scirocco made its official return in 2008 using the base platform of that year's Golf. It used a fusion of a turbocharger and a supercharger for its little 1.4 litre engine. And while that's garnered a fair amount of praise for its performance, little were audiences aware of the brand's future plans for the car a year later. In 2009, the Scirocco R was introduced, a sportier, nippier variant imbued with the same tech that its racing variant used to win the Nürburgring 24 hours in its class two years in a row. It was lowered, given a wider tread body style, exclusive front and rear bumpers, side skirts, and a roof spoiler reminiscent of the Nürburgring car. It also received a substantially better suspension, brakes, a 2-litre TSI direct injection turbo engine and turning clutch DSG transmission. The resulting figures were immense, 252 brake horsepower, comparable to that of the Golf R. To no surprise really, they both share the same engine. However, the Golf R is a four-wheel drive, while the Scirocco remains front wheel drive only to keep the weight down due to this it is 120 kilograms lighter than the golf r and remained the quickest high spec sports model in the volkswagen's lineup at the time a proper rapid little thing this i think this could be a surprise contender in its field mm. 
as the threat of global climate change looms ever closer, manufacturers push forward with the electrification of powertrains in an attempt to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions. Yeah, fucking right. But reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Electric cars do not do that. All right, what you do, uh, Toyota Prius, for instance, okay? What you do, you mine, mine and mine and mine all the nickel to get all the nickel for the batteries, and then you put it on a big gas guzzling cargo container ship all the way over to Norway, and then you put all the nickel into the batteries in Norway, then ship it all the way from Norway to the fucking Japan yeah, on that yeah, same cargo picture, ship, yeah, yeah. and then I'll, you put the just, Toyota, you put the battery yeah, in the fucking yeah. Toyota, and... Yeah, 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 we get the... Uh... Volkswagen was one of the first companies to take up the challenge of electrifying their lineup, but in order to put their new all electric ID brand on the map, they planned to build a car to show the world just how powerful electric cars can be. The result of this project was the Volkswagen IDR. It's made entirely out of carbon fibre and fitted with simply oversized aero components to produce amounts of downforce otherwise unimagined before. While the car is pretty big at 5.2 meters, it is stupidly light, especially for an electric car. The dual motor four wheel drive system produces 670 brake horsepower and combined with its weight, four wheel drive and instant power that electric motors produce, it can send this car from a standstill to 60 in just 2.25 seconds, well on par with internal combustion engine and hybrid hypercars. When VW unleashed the beast to the world, it instantly turned heads. At the 2018 Pikes Peak Hill Climb in the hands of Romain Dumas, it set a time of 7 minutes 57, the first car ever in history to break the 8 minute barrier. At the Nürburgring, it took the EV record, until Lotus took it earlier this year with the FireX. <laughs> and at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, the car was the first in the festival's history to set a hill climb time under 40 seconds, 39.9. Volvo V40 T5 R design. The V40 was revealed as a Z-segment five-door hatchback at the 2012 Geneva Motor Show. While it was shown as Volvo's entry model, the V40 would be very important in the whole of Volvo's catalogue, serving as a replacement for three different models, the S40 Salon, the V50 Estate and the C30 Hatchback. To give customers the S40's comfort, V50's practi pra practicality and C30's performance, the V40 was developed completely anew from scratch. The foundations of the car are similar to that of Ford's models for the time, and the styling is entirely new for a Volvo, with next to no visual references to any of its predecessors. The only attribute the V40 shares with any of its previous family is the design cues of the classic P1800 of the 60s and its later 1800 ES variant, allowing the V40 to give off a silhouette that can be interpreted to both an estate and a port and a, uh, an estate and a sports coupe. The moment it was debuted, it was universally praised, aesthetics practically and comfort in one affordable package. This T5R design is the sportiest V40 of them all, a 2 litre turbocharged inline 5 producing 210 brake horsepower and rapid acceleration performance. Sports suspension and 18 inch wheels provides a both sharp and responsive handling and smooth comfortable ride. A special front bumper and rear diffuser add the party pieces to this complete package. Winner of the 2016 Gran Turismo Awards at SEMA, this bad fast 51 Ford Custom Club Coupe, the <laughs> tongue twister, was developed by specialist customization team for former racing driver Bruce Levin. Levin's vision was to build a classic racing Ford with elements of European styling. So, the car underwent heavy bodywork modifications to achieve this goal, chopping the waistline and roofline too. Power was handled by a 1956 Lincoln 368 CU in V8 unit, tuned by a specialist in race engines to produce 375 brake horsepower. Unfortunately, they never specified what it was. The suspension has been constructed with care to provide competition handling the car was never originally designed to perform to. From start to finish, this conversion job took approximately 10,000 hours to complete. I hope it's worth it, Nevin. Built completely virtually, using realistic volume and base measurements, the ISO Revolta displays a fierce attitude and raw emotion through its bodywork. 
Throughout the history, ISO Revolta are famed international sophisticated clients in the 60s and 70s for its approach to fusing Italian design and American power, while not sparing any expense in quality and reliability. Classic models developed by this firm have been seen all over the world in the highest echelons of racing events, such as 12 hours of Sibering, 1000 kilometers of Nürburgring and 24 hours of Le Mans. The McHugh bearing and the Griffin logo also joined Formula One in the early 70s as a partner to Marlboro, with their machinery in the hands of legendary drivers like Jackie X, Gij Van, Van Lennep and Aruto Rizzo, I'm so sorry if I butchered any of those names, to name just a few. Zagato, famed coach builders with over a century of experience have built car bodies for the world's famous motoring brands and is well known to create iconic competitive and limited units on the regular. And with this, VGT, Zagato Vice President of Design Nori Harada pays tribute to Isa Verata to honour their heritage and passion for performance. With this, the Griffin and compete with the prancing horse, Raging Bull, Silver Arrow and Dinner Plate in the world of Gran Turismo. <laughs> Dinner Plate? <laughs> that BMW? <laughs> that BMW? Huh? Did, I, did I say Dinner Plate? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Hang on. Oh yeah, it does say dinner plate. Yeah, because if you look at the BMW yeah. logo, that's what it is. And so that is it. That is all of the car's history gone through. Next set video you see from me, it will be the beginning of the tournament at fucking last. It will begin with the lowest tier road car round. Then it will be the lowest tier motorsport round. And then it will be the lowest tier tuning house round. After that, it will be the mid tier road car round, mid tier motorsport round, and the highest tier tuning car round. Then it will be the highest tier road car round and the highest tier motorsport round before we move on to the next track. And that formula will be replicated across all 20 racing rounds before we go on to the drift trial and then the time trial. It probably won't be happening in that order. I'll probably throw the drift trial and the time trial in sort of the middle of the, um, in the middle of everything. Yeah, just a sort of a, split things up a bit you know so it's not just 20 rounds of racing straight and then it's two fun rounds at, at the end no it'll be the two sort of fun rounds will be in the middle of the uh the season i'll decide where to put them but don't worry the they will happen <laughs> at a time where i find it most appropriate but other than that thank you very much for learning about history the history of these cars and now, we race. We'll see you for that. Bye-bye.